Hi there. Welcome to Hersco Online, where we give educational tips and tricks to dispensing custom photothetics, custom made shoes, and AFOs. In this session, we're going to look at leg length discrepancies or any situation where a patient may need an extra lift. There are two categories of leg length discrepancies. The first is structural. This is where the limb is actually physically shorter. It can be due to congenital deformities, trauma, or even post-surgical. The second type is functional. This is usually due to a neuromuscular imbalance or a compensation. Functional leg length discrepancies are far more common than structural. With a functional leg length discrepancy, the bones and joints may not measure shorter, but there's an imbalance due to a muscle contraction or a compensation. For example, a unilateral plantar flexed foot. I like to approach leg length discrepancies from a practical perspective. The first goal is always the patient's comfort. Even if the leg length discrepancy has been measured using an x-ray or a tape measure, considering the patient's comfort is of primary importance. The classic measurement for leg length discrepancy is using a tape measure and taking a measurement from the ASIS, the anterior superior iliac spine, to the medial malleolus. Some practitioners like to take a measurement also from the navel to the medial malleolus. Regardless of the measurement that is made, I like to go low-tech and test what feels comfortable for the patient. It is possible to do this using cork blocks and having the patient stand on them and place the blocks under the heel until they feel most comfortable. Even in this high-tech age, it's possible to use the phone directory and place various thicknesses of the sheets underneath their heel until they find a comfortable position. You can then measure the thickness of the phone book and that will tell you approximately what your first lift should be. Wedge the material under the patient's heel or under their foot and see how much they can tolerate. Look for the signs of comfort. Even if you have measured leg length discrepancy of let's say two inches, it's important not to give them the full lift at the outset. Start at say 50% or one inch. If they can tolerate this for four to six weeks, consider adding another 25% or half an inch. Finally, you must decide where to add the lift. The rule of thumb is that if the lift is less than half an inch, it can normally fit inside the shoe. You can either add a heel wedge or add a lift to an actual custom foot orthotic. Beyond a half an inch, it's going to make it difficult for the patient's foot to fit comfortably inside the shoe. In those cases, you should consider adding some of the lift to the outsole of the shoe itself. If you make a custom molded shoe for the patient, you can have the choice of adding a lift either inside or outside the shoe. Personally, I like to do both, split the lift, so that cosmetically the shoe doesn't look so different, and yet by having some of the lift on the outside of the shoe, you get a chance to adjust it without affecting the internal fit. For more information on treating leg discrepancies, please visit hersco.com and click on our education tab. Thank you for joining Hersco Online.